People use the word legend a lot, but when you're talking about weather and Pittsburgh, there is one man whose name comes to mind when you say legend, and that is Joe DiNardo. He died today at the age of 87. He began his TV career here at KDK-TV, but he became an icon over three decades at Channel 4 with a no-nonsense style of forecasting and a heart of gold when it came to the city's people. Joe DiNardo never set out to become a TV meteorologist, as he told students at Cal U in 2011. Through the uh, Air Force, when I really took, it, took up uh, graduate school in meteorology, that's where it all started. His TV career took off in 1969 at WTAE, on the set with Don Cannon, Paul Long, and Ed Conway. It continued through the 70s, still paired with Don. Then in the 80s, on the desk with Don and folks like Sally Wiggin and Bill Hillgrove. Today in Pittsburgh, uh, temperatures again below the normal. He was a forecasting icon and a larger-than-life personality. Joe DiNardo, everybody's favorite yeah. weatherman. And he was a favorite. Had his own ad campaign with his name plastered on Port Authority buses. He even had a street named after him and was beloved by children everywhere for his hundreds of school visits. And sometimes his one-of-a-kind style made him the target of comedians like Pittsburgh Dad. Joe DiNardo would just decide when winter was over, sometimes as late as June. Remember, Joe said it would. Not it could, it would. And radio disc jockeys like Mikey and Big Bob. Tough one for these weather people. Wouldn't have been tough for DiNardo. <laughs> Joe DiNardo, legendary weatherman. <laughs> Joe's legend will live on not only in the memories of his 34 years on the air, but in the lives of all those he helped through his charity work, like the millions he raised for Special Olympics and Project Bundle Up, a humble man who just loved the weather. It's nice to be here, but I don't understand the thing that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> loved the city of Pittsburgh and loved her people. Oh, uh, and I had a chance to work with him when I worked yeah. at Channel 4. Four years? He, oh, yeah, he was always yeah. good for a laugh, and I'll share this story as quickly as I can, but this yeah. is the one story that always sticks in my brain. My friend was turning 30. She was not happy about it. So we did this fake news story that was for her birthday party where we pretended that she was really much older and that it, it was this big cover-up. So we interviewed Joe for the fake story, and he pretended that they dated in high school, <laughs> which got a big laugh at the party, and uh, he just always made you feel like a million bucks. He did. He did. He, he paid me a compliment once at a charity event when I, you know, I didn't know him from Adam, and he certainly didn't know me, but uh, he was just as sweet as he could be that first time we met. And, and I got to also say that that era that Joe came out of, our own Bob Kudzma, of course, was a contemporary of Joe's. And those guys in those days, they didn't have all the fancy schmancy tools and equipment that we've got and the radars and the satellite imagery that, that is just so readily available to us today. Uh, they did it by their, their wealth of knowledge and by force of personality. They mm -hmm. just were, they were bigger than life. And Joe was the biggest of the big. I think just the mere fact that we're talking about uh, Joe DiNardo here says two things. First of which, uh, he may have been in a competing station, but while he may have been a competitor, we all have respect for those with who we work against sometimes, if you can call it that, at the other Very stations. Good. And Joe was one of those people who yeah. commanded that respect just because he was that good. The other thing is, he was a Pittsburgh original. I can name four right now that I don't think you can go much past this. Bill Burns and Myron Cope, Bob Prince, and Joe DiNardo. That's right. That's right. Yep. Joe, we're going to miss you.